Everybody say one, 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 one. one, one, one. Now try again. One, 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 one. One, one, one. one Corinthians 11 verse 1. So one, one by one we're going to follow one another in Christ. Amen. Amen. Challenging verse. Moreover, brethren, I do not want you to be unaware. Oh no, I'm in the wrong one. Imitate me just as I also imitate Christ. Other translation says, follow me as I follow Christ. What you see me, do it. Because I do as Christ is saying. That's the challenge for you, that's the challenge for me, how we're supposed to live. And I am with boldness must be able to say, follow me as I follow Christ. But with that, my brother, there's two challenges on the one side, there where I work, there where I play, there where I dream, there where I have a holiday. I must be able to say, follow me as I follow Christ. If you follow me, you will understand how to be with Christ. You will understand how to follow Him. But the other part of the verse is that I'm always willing to follow somebody else who's following Christ. So if the word says, follow me as I follow Christ, it also means that there's somebody, hello, there's somebody that I need to follow. But my brother, my sister, so many times, when we say I need to follow somebody as he is following Christ, we evaluate in such an intense way those who go before us that, yeah, that we see a challenge, that we quite see an intense challenge. And may God set us free. May God help us with that. In Jesus' name, amen. Are you with me? May God help you through his grace that you are willing to follow a man, follow a woman that's walking a road with you because that's God's command. Make disciples of all the nations, that two sides of the coin, the one. Always be willing to be discipled. The other one, you go and make disciples. Both must work. If I say, follow me, but I'm not prepared to follow somebody else in Christ, then I'm building my own kingdom. Yeah, are you with me? Praise the Lord, God's going to help us. 1 Corinthians 11, and then after the specific verse, we see verse 16. We can go there. But if anyone seems to be contentious, we have no such custom, nor do the churches of, of God. Those who are causing trouble among us. Those who are causing trouble among us. For first of all, when you come together as a church, I hear that there are divisions among you. Divisions among you. For there must also be factions among you that those who are approved may be recognized among you. Who's the guys that are approved? My brother, my sister, when there's factions, when there's different opinions, the one that is approved is the one that is not being swayed by the opinions. By the issues. By the one says left, the other one says right. People that will not cause division. But some are sent, and God says it will happen so that those who are approved, those who are not just loyal, but those who are standing in Christ, that I'm following Christ doesn't matter what. If people make mistakes, if people would hurt me, if they disappoint me, yeah, if things go right, if things go wrong, I follow those who are approved in the midst of factions. Did you, did you hear that verse? I believe so. For there must, there must also be factions among you that those who are approved may be recognized among you. That you are part of a spiritual family, not because you have the same opinion as all the others. But you are part of a specific spiritual family because God said so. And in that place, 
You are there together with other brothers and sisters to grow in how to follow Christ out there. When we come together, it's all about how we as a, as a family that God uniquely has put together, how we're supposed to live out Christ there. Are you with me? May God help you. May God help me. This is all about also Paul addressing the church about how they look at one another, how they trust one another, how they have issues with one another. And in that context, there's communion. There's communion. Now, actually, like in the previous service, we are supposed to have family communion. So I don't know why they took out the children's church. If they can get them, please. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So in the context of Coming to a place to have unity in the church, even unity among churches, you will know if there's issues in your heart, when how the way that you look at people, the way that you will look at leaders, the way that you will look at your brother and your sister. You will know that if you are walking with Christ or not. Nobody else. But you will know it deep in your heart. Because if I cannot have faith in people around me, cannot be excited about the fact that God has a plan for every man and every woman. Then what am I doing? Why will I play? Why will I play with God? If I must say that. In a place that I don't have respect for him. But if I respect him. If the fear of the Lord is on me. Then I respect the fact that Christ gave everything for that brother. For that sister. Even though. They are messing it up. Even though they are messing it up. I will not. My, my opinion will not be more precious. Christ didn't die for my opinion. Hello. He died for that person that I have an opinion about. No. Oh. We see in from verse 23 that Paul says, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Therefore, whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner, eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body, not respecting the brother and the sister, not understanding what the blood has done for the one next to you, sitting next to you. For this reason, etc., etc., a lot further. What am I saying? Verse 33, Therefore, my brethren, when you come together, wait on one another. Verse 31, for if we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. What are we talking about even today with communion? Let us evaluate what is happening in our lives. Let's be open that the Holy Spirit will speak to us. And that you know if there's things in your heart with somebody, repent before the Lord. Because the issue is not with you and the brother. The issue is with you and God. Because God is excited about that person. God loves that person. God believes in that person. God wants to bless that person with an awesome destiny. You have an issue with God. You have an issue with God then. Because you decide, I think God's opinion is a little bit wrong. <clears throat> this is what he's supposed to feel about that person. This is what he's supposed to think about that person. This is how he's supposed to deal with that person. Whoa. So in communion, even now, my brother and my sister, I, 
I ask you, let's, uh, when we partake in the communion, if the leaders can, can help us, let's proclaim, proclaim, I will respect the body of Christ. I will respect my brother and my sister. And for whatever was there that was not right, thank you, God, for your forgiveness through the blood. But when I respect what he has done, forgiveness is the obvious. Forgiveness is the lifestyle. If I am who I am through the blood of Christ, then forgiveness is a lifestyle. Grace is a lifestyle that God has for me. Amen? Hallelujah. So those with the families, whose families are here, the idea, you sit together and that, you know, that we can partake together in Jesus' name. The blood speaks. The blood, the blood speaks of forgiveness. The word of God has the authority into our lives through what Christ has done on the cross. The living word, Jesus Christ, came and he gave everything. And nothing was more explained, more perfect than on the cross of Christ. Be in the message of the cross because you are crucified with Christ. Your life is found in the truth, in the message. Because the truth came. Became flesh and he was crucified and he died. All for the sake of the others. Amen. I give it over to you. That you will just have time with God. Thank you, Father, for who you are, what you do. We honor you. We thank you for the cross. God, we will boast in nothing else except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you that we can be crucified with Christ, that we can be found in salvation. We can be found in forgiveness. We can be found in the new opportunity because the new opportunity for life is only in and through the blood of Christ. We thank you for that, Father, in Jesus' name. As all say, Amen, Amen. Let it be so. Then Paul goes on to 1 Corinthians 12. Thank you. If the, the young men and women can go for children church. Then Paul goes on in 1 Corinthians 12. After laying a foundation of Brothers, sisters, you're supposed to be able to follow one another in such a way because everyone chooses to follow Christ. Have that type of trust in one another and then lay the foundation of how will you respect the blood, how will you understand communion, of how you honor one another in the body and make sure that there's no issues. From that place, then he explains what God is doing in his body. When in 1 Corinthians 12, we read from verse 4, there are d diversities of gift, gifts, but the same spirit. There are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. There are diversities of activities, but it is the same God who works all in all. Diversities, differences. Diversities, differences. But not to, call divi not to cause division. So there can be certain giftings in me, but I need to respect the others that don't have that gifting, and I'm supposed to serve with the gifts that God has given me, with the ministry that God has given me. Hello? Verse 7, after all of this, but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. What is manifesting through you, my brother, my sister? What is manifesting through you, your hurt or your disappointment, your offense? What is manifesting through you, your flesh, your, your own 
way of doing, what is manifesting through you. But if it's a manifestation of the Holy Spirit, then it will be for the profit of the body of Christ. Then it will be for the profit of others. If it's the manifestation of the Spirit. It will not be about me. It will not be about me because I have died with Christ. I no longer live. Christ lives in and through me. And he is there for the people. He is there for a body. He died, didn't die for me. He, did die, he died for a body. He died for the dream from the Father. For God so loved the world. The world that we must turn our back on. The world full of rubbish. No. For God so loved the world that he dreamt about. The perfect world that he dreamt about. That he wanted to create. He loved so much that the specific dream that he gave his son. So that the dream of the father can become a reality. And that dream is me and you as his eternal, eternal home. Are you with me? So how are you working with God to establish that? How are you living, first of all, father's dream? That what he wants. But goes the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is faithful, faithful, faithful to the call from the Father. Jesus said, the Father will send you the promise, and the promise is the Holy Spirit. Father sent Jesus to die on the cross to explain his heart. Then he sent the promise, Holy Spirit, to remind us of what Jesus did and to explain it further what Jesus has done. But when the Holy Spirit works, there will be diversities. There will be different gifts. There will be different ways. But all, he says, verse 4, the same Spirit, verse 5, the same Lord, verse 6, the same God. If I'm serving God and if he's my Lord and if I understand the Holy Spirit, then that is the focus. Then I choose if I honor the Spirit, I will be able, I will have the capacity to be in unity with brothers and sisters. If I honor the Spirit, if I honor my Lord, if I honor God as my God, I will have that capacity. But if my things that I go through is my God, and that is more important than God himself, I will have the issues with people, and it will stay there, it will... It, there will always be some stuff happening in me because the enemy sees that I, he can take the ground because God is not God in that area. No, we choose what he has for us. Amen. Amen. The manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for what? For the profit of all. Not for your profit, but for the profit of all because all in the context of all, that's the dream of the Father. That's the dream of the Father. Then he goes on and explain the nine specific gifts of the Spirit. And then he goes on and explain the church as the body of Christ in such a way that we are not just in the body. He's talking about we are living stones. Each one of the living stones. But they all look the same. Psh. They're all in unity. The focus is not on the bricks. The focus is on what's happening in the house. And we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. That's the bricks that's supposed to look the same. The brick has not a lot to say. The brick is dead, if I can say like that. But alive for the purpose of the one inside of the temple. You are living stones being built in, being built in, being built in. With certain patterns that applies for everyone. For everyone. For everyone. Everyone the same principles. That's why brick upon brick, layer upon layer. Are you with me? But, but, we are not just the temple of the Holy Spirit. We are also the body of Christ. And in the body of Christ, there's a lot of diversities, a lot of differences. And if we honor Christ and respect the blood, you will see it in how much you can respect others around you and not in your heart and your mind. Quick, so, be so quick to form an opinion. Be so quick to take the heart away 
put a hard day with a person or not. I don't know if I can trust. I can trust. The more I mature as a child, not become childish because you're going to grow. As a child, you're going to grow to become childish. Or you're going to grow to become mature. You'll become more mature. And the more mature you are, it means the more you can run with the purposes of your Father. The more you can run with a purpose for the Holy, with the Holy Spirit, why He was sent. Why gifts were given to you. Why you have certain abilities. Why you have certain skill. It's not for your profit. If you are mature. But otherwise, I will become childish in the way that I, if people don't respect what I do, if people don't always say thank you, if people do me wrong, if people cheated me with certain stuff. No. The problem is then it's about me. I'm not approved for what God has for me. Amen. We're supposed to be there for one another in that way. Amen? May God help you. May God help me. Paul really intensely addressed these issues in the church there. Interesting that with a lot of divisions, a lot of things happening, he's laying that foundation in that, the first, that chapter 10 and 11 about the communion, about the blood. Then he comes and says, yes, when the Holy Spirit works, there's a lot of things. But remember, there's one God, one Lord, one Spirit. It's about oneness. And then he brings in the heart of God. It's about love. If you don't have the heart of the Father, you have nothing. If you don't live from that place, if you don't live from the place where it's the heart of the Father, you have nothing. In the body of Christ, like you've read there before in your life, a hand cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. That's arrogance. Because I'm, not, because I'm not the ear, I'm not part of the body. No, that's still focusing on me. Inferiority, superiority, when you struggle with rejection, the focus is still pride. You feel rejected, you feel you're a nothing, it's still pride. What is pride? It's the focus on yourself. So pride manifests in different ways. Superiority, inferiority, both. The root is pride. The root is me. Either I'm the one or poor me. But it's still me. Instead of it's about him and his body. But if you cannot accept who he is and that it's the one spirit, one Lord, one God, what you will do is yes, then you will waste your life with the people around you. You will be a slave to them, slave as a, as a curse. Where you are in a slavery Brought by the flesh and the spirit of the world. Now you are a slave for Christ. You remember we talked about that? That means you are bound by his heart. Bound in his love. You are bound with his peace. Praise God for that. And as a slave of Christ, you say, I'm willingly surrendering myself. I want to be bound by you. By your will. By your wisdom. By your decisions. By your dream for my life. I want you to... Take me and do hold me in that place, please, Lord. Hello? But I can say no. And not one of us will say no. But as I take hold of my life in my way, it's either the one or the other. I still go to heaven. I'm a child of God. But why will I mess up my life here on earth? It's not worth it. You with me? Anybody here? We use the example that we've used before. The one is the heart, the other one is the lung. You know, you see this guy, he's just cruising full through life, and you have some intensity, and if he just can get some intensity in his life, you know? But he's part of the lung. I'm not talking about laziness. I'm not talking about not walking in the energy and the love that God has. But, you know, the lung goes like... You with me? And the heart says, I must go. This is how I must work and everything. And that guy, he just. (laughs) 
But you know, if Mr. Lung will do that, what Mr. Hart is doing, what you call it, hyperventilation. Heart will not get the right amount of oxygen. <laughs> if you must walk around like that the whole day. Because the, the heart says, but why is the lung not doing that? Doesn't understand the body of Christ. Not respecting how, part, how God has put together the body. If I decide, I'm also going to take it a little bit easier in life. And doof. 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 Grave. Boom. Gone. Are you with me? But because we, we don't understand the body of Christ, we have petty, petty issues. And that is what Paul is addressing in the church. Only in that church, not in our church or churches now, you know. Yeah. God must help us that we will honor what he has for each one. Even in the context of different churches. You'll have a church, there's ten people in the church. Hmm. I wonder what they are doing wrong. Hello? But meanwhile, they are the Wat noem jy die 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 toering daar so by die lichaam in Engels? The ops office. The... Wat is goed? Some other tower you said. The control. The control tower. You know? That church is just 10 people. And we are 1,000. And here we are... Be- we are the thousand that we must make sure that all the luggage are going to the right aeroplanes. Actually, they, they need to grow, you know. There's something wrong there. You won't believe it if it's not for them. We're going to have some Aries that are really crashing into one another. One serious, 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 very serious job. With a thousand, one suitcase in the wrong place. Hey! In Hawaii instead of in Italy. Okay, reroute, boom. Put you in a hotel in Rome with the Pope and <laughs> you enjoy. And then one day you have your luggage. Those 10 guys up there, they make a little mistake like that. Huh. That's something different. But those maybe, that's maybe a congregation. God don't want another 10 or not even another 10 with a specific 10 there in that office. Up there. Because they're going to mess up his plan. Mess up what he wants to establish with all the airplanes that must land and that must go. And You with me? So he has that specific 10. And they are like intercessors. They can understand in the spirit certain things that happen. Like just in like next level. And regulate certain things even in the spirit. For what's coming and what's going. They don't even know. Hello? But how dare you judge them. And decide that there's something majorly wrong with that church. Because there's only ten. If you are God and you control of the body of Christ. Then okay. But if you are not God. Rather stay out of that. (laughs) Amen. Let us respect the body of Christ. Let's learn from one another. Let's learn from one another. God, what can I learn from the ten? To be sensitive, to be evaluated, to, to, to understand intercession in the right, accurate way. What can I learn from how those specific, that church with a thousand, that must work and they give themselves with the suitcases that the right, right stuff go to the right places. What must I learn from them? But I can always, 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 always learn from others around me. If they have the right attitude in humility. Let humility protect you so that you will stay teachable. Amen. We're with it. We're going to 1 Corinthians 13. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I have become sounding brass or a clanging Symbol. Everybody, can you make the noise of a clanging symbol? 
No, that sounds like ducks praising the Lord. <laughs> Clanging cymbal is like irritating. It's like, hello? And you can just be one hell of an irritation to everybody around you because you know all this stuff. You are so intensely spiritual, and spiritually you can be very accurate. But if it's not in love, you are just one big noise bringing irritation. Not irritation because it's their flesh. No. Irritation because you are in the flesh. <sighs> God help me. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and then all the knowledge, and though I have all faith that I could remove mountains, you know, I have faith in, there goes Naval Hill, the only mountain in Bloemfontein. I will be at least in the news, you know, a man of power for the hour. You have not love, I am nothing. You are absolutely nothing. And that nothing doesn't mean you surrender to Christ. That nothing means there's nothing you can do. There's nothing that you do with Christ, even though you are a child of God. It's a shame then. Are you with me? You can be the man of power for the hour. But if it's not in love, it's a shame. It's nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and not have love, it profits me nothing. It's one waste of a life on earth. Let's waste this week. Let's try to do absolutely nothing and be of no value in this week by not walking in love. By not taking your gifts and what you have in love. You walk with the irritation in your heart, there's no love. You say you love God, you're a liar, according to 1 John 4. If you say you love God, and but you hate your brother, you are? Hello? Oh, you can but just love that brother, hey? Then you're a liar. That's not me and you. In Jesus' name, we've repented. Amen. May the Lord help you. May the Lord help me. In Jesus' name. Franzel, you would mind your script. Okay. We see four verses. Verse four, five, and six. You know that. Love suffers long. And he's kind. Love does not envy. Does, love does not parade itself. It's not puffed up. Does not behave rudely. Does not seek its own. Is not provoked. Thinks no evil. Does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. The one pulls on the next principle. If it says it suffers long, it talks about patience. Love is patient. To be patient, it sometimes feels like true suffering. And God says that. It feels like you are suffering when you need to be patient with Nico, especially with him. But the Lord expects that from you. Are you with me? And that is not, I'm patient with you. Okay? No. Though that patient is like, I, I believe in you. I'm excited about you. God is excited about you. And I know he has an excellent plan for your life. There's an excellent dream that he has for you. And because I do it with God's love and his emotion over you, his emotion over you is his, he loves you and he's excited about you. I, the pride says, I cannot understand why God is excited about you. But that's plain pride. Are you with me? But the basis of everything, God is giving you the room. God is patient with all people because his desire is not for them to perish, but to have eternal life. Students, that's scripture reference. Second verse of word one, the first story that you've written, the week when you came to Criari. Anybody? 2 Peter 3, 9. Thank you, Lord. Is at least one. Okay. Are you with me? 
So the patience is because God has a faith, God has a hope, God believes in you that you're going to make some right decisions to love Him and so that He can love you also. Amen. First of all, He gave you everything in love and you respond in love. God said, Lord, love suffers long and is kind. Kindness, what is friendlichkeit in Engels? Engels is most kindness or friendliness. Okay. Now we have some very religious smiles many times. Hey, hello, hello. You know, I've seen so many people that says hello to me. Hello, pastor. And then I sense in my spirit and I just know. You know that hello, pastor. It's just one Tupperware, whatever. Hello, my brother. And I must make sure it's not the same Tupperware going back, you know. Some fake smile. <sighs> May God help us in Jesus' name. But this, this kindness, we see in, as you write it down, Jeremiah 31, verse 3. Leaders, students, you know that one? Yes. I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, I have drawn you with my loving kindness, with my hospitality. With my heart and the door that's open and say, you are welcome. I've drawn you with a welcome in my heart for you to come. And let where I am, let it be your home. Because I've loved you with an everlasting love. I've drawn you with my hospitality. My kindness. There's a welcome in my heart for you because I have loved you with an everlasting love. And that welcome in your heart for people is genuine when you understand patience. Because in patience, it's not just when somebody does something wrong and now you're patient with him. Patience is like, I, I open the room and I know that God has an excellent plan with your life. I position myself with God and with his emotions over you. He's driven by love towards you. Maybe you feel you are driven by anger. You are driven by fed upness. You are driven by your irritation. Driven by your frustration. Driven by your opinion towards that person. Your issue is not with a person. Your issue is with God. Go to God. Repent. Go to God. So that you can have the right emotions right opinion about that person and from that place try your best so that in love you can bring truth amen love suffers long is kind love does not envy envy jealous jealousy envy has to do with jealousy the first two brothers on earth abel and cain jealousy I will even slaughter my own brother. Love is not that. Love is excited about that person has done, done it right. Even I've done it wrong. That person is right. I'm wrong. I'm excited that he is right. <laughs> no, you're not excited that you are wrong. But you're excited that he did it right. Even though you did it wrong. Even though you feel ashamed. Even though... You feel 2 out of 10 for me, 10 out of 10 for that guy. You know, great man. Nice, nice. You know, in the athletics or in the game, yeah, that, that guy won. You lost. You're going to become jealous? Are you excited for the man? It was his hour. It was his moment. God gave him the moment to win. Enjoy it with him. God is excited because he wanted that guy to win. It's always freaky when the people pray, you know. If the rugby team or the soccer team will pray that they will win. <laughs> A little bit interesting. But pray that they will enjoy it. And that even the guys that lost, that they will be okay. And not just okay with the guys that won. No envy, no jealousy to rise up. No Cain spirit. Because with jealousy, Jesus, God came and he said, sin is 
luring for you around the corner. What's that in English? Anybody with English? Lurking. Sun is lurking around the corner. Okay, there you have it. You're not, you didn't mess it up all. No. But God in his wisdom wants to protect you. And therefore the word will come to you. You can take the offense when you've done it wrong. Or you can come and be teachable and say, how must I do it right? I also want to do it right. Where I'm inaccurate. God, please give me a brother that show me the way that is accurate. Hello? Or must it be a Cain offering that is wrong and you don't feel threatened, you don't get issue because everybody got it wrong? God's grace, hopefully there's somebody that got it right so that you can learn from the person who got it right so that next time you will get it right. That's love. That's love. That's part of love. Does not envy. Love does not parade itself, especially when you don't feel good about yourself. Then you need to parade yourself. And then others need to parade you. We call it encouragement. There's something about encouragement, but there's something like, they must put me up there, then I feel encouraged. Be careful. Why must you be put up there to feel encouraged? Why can the Holy Spirit's encouragement cannot, cannot first strengthen you? Strengthen you. Because we believe a lot of rubbish of what others are saying. With other chochas, spirits. Therefore, we need to find other spirits and other people that will encourage me. No, yes, we must encourage one another. But in what way? Flaital. What is flaital? I'll ask me English for dog. I just give you all the smooth talk. You know, I'm just, oh, you are this, you are this. I can count on my fingers one, two, three, four, five, six. Of guys that came to Crown that said, Pastor, I found nobody that can, that I know that will help me so much like you. And this, and you're the reason I'm here. And I would immediately, no, 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 no. Those guys were the guys with the biggest poison that they will throw out there about Krihari. And be careful. Be careful of the guys that you can smooth talk you. But with the guys that can also face to face, but you know that you know that you know you're in covenant, your relationship is face, is, is uh, what's the word? Safe. Your relationship is f safe because you've walked a road and suddenly two, two things happened and that person is just, Pow! what happened? Christ, not the foundation. Christ in the relationship, not the foundation. Christ in him, Christ in me, not the foundation. But God, not even the devil, God will come and test that so that he believes that I will see these things are shaking and that the sin is uh, crawling from behind the door. And that he believes that you will see it and say, I will not let that thing come in from that door. I will close the door, lock it. And in this place, what will be is from him, the Lord. Amen. Ah, oh, come on, please. Does not parade itself. Is not puffed up. Does not behave rudely. <sighs> Does not seek its own. Is not provoked. Thinks no evil. Does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. There's a teaching about two or three Sundays that we did about this. So if you, I believe if you realize God wants you to get into this, please ask the office. We will give it to you. I want to finish off with this. Does not rejoice in iniquity. You know that little thing of somebody, they, they did you wrong. They cheated you. 
they spoke behind your back, and then something happened. They are just blessed, and everything is just fine, and and then something happened, and it's not like you feel sorry for them. It's not like, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, you're not doing that. It's just silent contentment about the person that, what is boinchik, get his loinchi. What is boinchik, get his loinchi, in English? Is there not such a saying, something like that? Vivian, come on, help me. No, okay. Every dog gets his day. Something like that. And you know, it's not like you, yay! No, but it's just, mm hmm, mm hmm. <laughs> That's up to the West. When you have that type of thing, all these things, more and more, 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 that's the worst. Then you know you need to grow in all these other previous facets that we talked about now. So that you can truly be in the place, rejoices with the truth. What's the truth? God gave that man everything. God has an excellent plan with him. Once again, we go back to basics. God, you rejoice over that person. Help me to get my heart in the right place so that I also can rejoice about the fact that you have an excellent plan for that man. Those guys, they are so corrupt. You know? Romans. Peter the Apostle. These guys. You know, we need to sort them out. Other two brothers. Fire from heaven, Lord. <laughs> you know? Mm -mm. <laughs> That's not the way. <laughs> That's not the way. How can I love that person more? That sounds freaky. <laughs> but, uh, but for the once or twice in my life that I got it right with some guys that really want to mess up everything. And the guy is swearing at me. I, yeah, I spoke about this. And then would just curse and what, 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 everything, break you down and be little and in front of the group and you just, you know, God has such an awesome plan with you. God is so excited about you. He loves you. The guy was just, whoosh. go with truth. Go with truth. Go with truth. Are you with me? And sometimes God puts certain people in your life uh, sent by God and you pray them away but it will not work <laughs> they were not sent by the devil whoa unto the stumbling blocks no they are not the stumbling block they are there to show you some flesh in your life <sighs> are you with me just sometimes it happened even in marriage I don't know if any married people saw that Sometimes flesh can manifest in marriage that you never thought could manifest. Only me. Okay. Pray for me. But yeah, <laughs> God's going to help us. Amen. So let's walk in love, man. Be excited. Be excited. Lord, this wife, I'm so excited about her. You know, no, teeth gone, patience, patience, I will be patient with her. No, I believe God is only the best for her. Lord, help me not to be a stumbling block in her life. And ah, the Lord must help her. But first he must help me. You start with yourself. God has put her there in your life for a purpose. And some other people, don't pray them away. Okay? Pray the rubbish away that manifest in you when that person comes close. Because it's not supposed to manifest like that. No, no, no. Sorry. It's not supposed to manifest like that. You need to be out. So that there's no, no rubbish in you that can manifest. I have so much more peace, you know, here at this new job that God gave me. Oh. Maybe it's your, you quit the challenge that God gave you. To deal with some flesh. 
and you say you didn't have peace anymore, God moved me on to a new season. <laughs> Never happened with you, but I'm just saying in principle that you are aware of that. May the Lord help us. Amen. In Jesus' name. But my brother, my sister, with truth, I'm excited. I'm excited. And truth in love. The essence, the essence is like, I'm excited about the fact God has only the best for you. When you give yourself with your business and you fail, but you are faithful. And this other guy, he prays once or twice and, and he just got everything. You're excited about his breakthrough. Even though you could feel by fact that you verdiend it, deserve it, a hundred times more than that person. And it seems like unfair. In the midst of unfairness, God will put unfairness in front of you. Because it's unfair that Jesus must die for your sin. It's unfair. But it was God's love. And if he's in your life, love is in your life. And then he will challenge you so that you can see how much of him is working through you and how much not. So that what? You can feel condemned? No. So that you can grow. Like in verse, in chapter 11 about communion, so that you can judge yourself Evaluate your life, not to condemn yourself, but judge your life so that you have the guts to be honest with yourself and not blame others for the rubbish in you. Uh, just, just the 3% rubbish in you. But that you can deal with that. that that's, it has no place. There's no place in my life. Mr. Poff Adder is not supposed to live in this hall. You with me? So may God help us in Jesus' name. Father, come and set us free. Through your spirit, in the name of Jesus, your son. Lord, you have such an awesome plan for us. You are driven in your eternal life with something that is called love. And you call yourself love. Lord, help us to see that. Help us to receive love by receiving you. Help us to receive you by receiving love. And to respect that, that you love me in such a way, therefore I will love myself because I agree with your opinion about my life. Therefore I will love myself with the love that you have given me. I honor you for that, Father. And with that capacity and that beauty that I receive from you, I will bring forth that beauty to people around me, that it will not be about me. It will be about them. And to shine forth your beauty. The beauty seen in your love, Lord. Into every situation. I bless every man, every woman here with that. Let it be so for them. So for me. In Jesus' name, so we pray. As all say. Amen.